vibing, we vibing. Alexa, play Ariana Grande. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. W-P-H-A-T You're listening to the number one health and wellness podcast. The place where health business connect. Perfectly, Perfectly healthy, healthy and tone, tone radio. radio. With your host, Darren McDuffie. And now, prepare to get fat. What's up, peeps, and welcome back to another episode of Perfectly Healthy and Toned Radio, otherwise known as WPHAT. I'm your show host, Darren McDuffie, alias Fat Man, because I help you become perfectly healthy and toned and conscious, of course. Today's show is with Wendy Myers on her book, Limitless Energy. And before we get into learning more about that show, I just wanted to give you a reminder of the previous show I did with Stephanie Person on the ketogenic diet, or what I like to call the do-it-all diet. So if you're someone out there who is looking to lose weight, you're looking to optimize your hormones, then that's the show for you. So go back and listen to that show. And as always, please leave a review. If you're in iTunes, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to get a review. And if you're you're, 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 you're in the show from that platform, you can always leave comments under the show. I urge you to do so. I really love your feedback. Now to get into today's show with Wendy Myers, it is about limitless energy how many people out there are suffering from fatigue maybe your fatigue is due to detoxification not getting enough detoxification and specifically heavy metals and that's what we delve into in wendy's book so pay close attention and listen to the show and learn more about heavy metals because if you were like me about five or six years ago i knew nothing about heavy metals people were saying stuff about that when it came to detoxification and all i ever thought about was yeah aluminum yeah this yeah mercury but how do we even get those things into our body so if you're someone out there who hasn't been informed about heavy metals this may be the missing link for you now let's get into wendy's bio wendy's interest in nutrition began with the death of her father from esophageal cancer intuitively she knew his chemo radiation and 10 medications killed him prematurely she vowed to find out what made him sick why he died what role medications played in his demise and how she could avoid the same fate The more Wendy learned, the more she realized that all the answers to health do not lie in our medical system. Food, detoxification, and natural healing modalities must be used to complement the advances in modern medicine. She is passionate about educating the public on the importance of long-term detoxifying considering our toxic world. She healed her own health issues through hair mineral analysis and developed a unique detox and supplement program. Wendy wants to help others do the same. Wendy is also a functional diagnostic nutritionist and, as you know, she had her own bout of fatigue and that's how she came into what I like to call the game of hell. So what are you going to learn on this show? Here's what you're going to learn. This is something I didn't know and I found out more about it through Wendy. Why is sleep an energy intensive process? Why do we actually need energy to sleep? You'll find out a lot about that. What specific medical conditions are associated with too many heavy metals? It'll be alarming to know that all of these common things that we are experiencing in our world today could be linked to the fact that we have not detoxified any heavy metals. Can fatigue be a factor in relationships? I actually asked Wendy a really personal question about her divorce. Her marriage ended and I asked her a really personal question about that and you'll be surprised at her answers. What is the ultimate diet for detoxification? Is it a vegan diet? Do we need to eat meat again you're going to be surprised by the answer and why should we not depend on standard liver detoxification you know that they say our liver is the detoxification center in our body but should we just depend on that or do we need other means to detox so you'll hear the answer to that as well all right peeps enjoy the show wendy myers welcome to perfectly healthy and tone radio how are you tonight i'm fantastic how are you thank you for having me i am doing fantastic as well we've finally got you on this has been some time in the making so so to speak so <laughs> yeah. i'm glad i got you on your book tonight we're discussing called limitless energy really good book and gets into detox and heavy metals and what i like to do when i have a guest on is just go through their health journey how did you get started in health and 
where are you going with it now? Yeah, so I got started in health, like a lot of people that are, have health issues. I started studying all, all different types of, uh, of things about health. When I started having fatigue and brain fog and trouble losing weight, I, ju- I was about 37 years old and I was taking impeccable care of myself. I mean, just like a full-time job, eating healthy food and, and exercising and going to bed at 9.30 every night and taking the highest quality supplements. And I still felt like crap, to be perfectly honest. And I was having like mood issues. I was having anger issues and bouts of anger and rage. And and I just was not myself. This was not the person that I knew. And I went to my doctor and I figured out what's wrong with me. And then she did about $4,000 worth of tests that I had to pay out of pocket. These weren't tests that are covered by insurance. And, and she found out I had the hormone levels of a menopausal woman. And that was, I was not really happy to hear that, (laughs) but I was really even more unhappy to hear that she wanted to uh, give me hormone replacement therapy. And I, at 37 years old, I just thought that I'm just, I'm not doing that. I mean, a lot of red flags went up and that's just not how I had envisioned my life at that time, you know, to, to take hormone replacement therapy. I had read studies that caused cancers, even if it's bioidentical. And I just read a lot of bad things about it and just didn't want to do that, go that route. And, and for what, some, some women, that's the right choice. It just wasn't what I wanted to do at that time. And so I hit the internet and I, I started studying and figuring out, you know, what interferes in hormones. Like I, I didn't want to take replacement. I wanted to figure out why my body wasn't making hormones and how I could get it to start functioning again naturally. And I found a website that was offering hair mineral analysis and detoxification of metals and mineral replacement. And I thought, okay, I'll try that. You know, why not? I was a little skeptical, but some of the things just made sense to me and resonated with me. And I tried a hair test and started their program and I started feeling a lot better within a month or two. I started sleeping better and just generally feeling better, taking magnesium and calcium and things like that. And I, it just, something clicked for me and I started studying everything I could about heavy metals. And then I decided to start my website, MyersDetox.com to just educate other people about the dangers of heavy metals and how it affects your body and how to detox them. Yeah, it looks like you just changed your website. Congratulations on that because I actually went on maybe two, three weeks ago and now your website has changed and the website looks really nice. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, it used to be called live to 110.com and I decided to change it to myersdetox.com. Yeah, but that's still the name of your podcast. I know you're a fellow podcaster as well. Yes, yes. I have the live to 110 podcast. Great, great. You mentioned something and I wanted to kind of elaborate that or get you to elaborate on it. Whether you said that you were doing everything that was good, you were taking the right supplements, you were going to bed on time, but you were still having these bouts with fatigue. How common is that? Because for a large segment of the population, they seem to think that, hey, I'm doing everything and I shouldn't be tired. And it's kind of like they're denying this fatigue. How common is is that? Because I know you still work. Yeah, fatigue, I think, is the number one complaint of the thousands of clients that I've worked with. And and it was my main complaints. And I think even if people have more energy, they want more of it. (laughs) You know, everyone wants more energy. Um, But it, it definitely is the first warning sign that something isn't working correctly in your body. And you want to heed that call. You don't want to ignore it or just drink caffeine all day long to try to boost yourself as like a crutch. Uh, You want to take that as a warning sign that you need to act and do something about that, whether it's giving your body better nutrition, drinking more water, or detoxing your body of toxic metals that cause fatigue. And that's what I wrote about in my book, Limitless Energy, was that the research I had been doing on mitochondrial poisons, you know, our mitochondria make our body's energy, there are little powerhouses, and there are certain metals that interfere in its functioning. And it's a, a big reason, not the only reason, but a big reason why people are are having so much be- fatigue and experiencing chronic fatigue, and then in turn, don't have the energy they need to sleep 
sleep is a very energy intensive process. So that's why people don't wake up feeling refreshed and uh, why people don't have the energy to heal, much less live their lives. And I know there's a lot of people suffering from chronic fatigue that aren't even able to work or take care of their families because they're just so, so tired. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because that was the first time I ever heard of that in reading your book, Limitless Energy, was the fact that sleep is an energy intensive process. Go into that a little bit more and and explain to us why we need sleep. I mean, not why we need sleep, but why is sleep an energy intensive process? Yes. Well, when if you really think about it, when you're sleeping, you're repairing your body's tissues, your immune system is fighting infections. That's why a lot of times people wake up kind of sweating in the middle of the night or they get hot because their body is fighting infections at night when they're resting um, and they're not digesting their food. So their body is able to use the, the energy left over at the end of the day to, to do these energy intensive processes. You're also detoxing when you're asleep. Your brain is detoxing when you're, when you're sleeping. All of this requires energy. I know that fatigue is the number one complaint. You did this yourself. You said, I was tired. I went to the doctor and that's the number one complaint. And I can go back to that from my old pharmaceutical roots and speaking with doctors on a daily basis. But what does fatigue open the gateway to? Because a lot of people just dismiss it and say, hey, I'm tired. I'm older. I'm in my 40s. I'm in my 50s. I'm in my 60s. I might even be in my 20s or early 30s. But why is fatigue something so serious and why is it a gateway for things that are bigger, things that are, yeah. are bigger to come? Yes. And, you know, even if you're in your 50s or your 60s or, or whatnot, you should still have plenty of energy. And I think a lot of people, just like myself, when I was in my 30s, I just thought, oh, I'm getting older and, um, you know, it's just, this is just how things are. And, you know, the, the fatigue kind of creeps up on you very, very slowly. And then when you just wake up and you realize, my God, I am just exhausted or you've slept for eight or nine hours and you wake up and you're just not refreshed. You just like have a, you just have to drag yourself out of bed. These things are not normal. It's not because you're getting older. It's simply because your body is struggling to make energy. And uh, one of the, the biggest problems and one of the biggest obstacles for energy production are metals like arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, and cesium. And I talk about these, a chapter for each one in my book, Limitless Energy. I also talk about mercury and lead. But when you have these metals, and everyone has some level of these metals in them. And it's, no one's immune. No one can escape our toxic environment that we live in. But when you're experiencing fatigue from these metals, you're less able to protect your body. For instance, your immune system requires a lot of energy to work properly. Your digestive system requires energy to work properly. Even your gut lining, a lot of people have leaky gut um, because the, the little cells that line your gut lining require a lot of energy, ATP, to be held together, to have really tight junctions. And, and then if you, you need energy, if you don't have enough energy to sleep, you can't restore your body. And so it just starts this domino effect in the body leading it to people to their doctor and then to their diagnoses. And people get certain diagnoses based on their genetic susceptibility typically. But even different types of to toxic metals will interfere in the body's metabolism in, in different ways. Like people can get high blood pressure, they can get heart disease, they can get diabetes because of certain toxic metals will interfere in those body's processes leading to those diagnoses. And I talk a lot about different health conditions and what metals specifically cause those health conditions. But that's kind of like a general overview uh, of how metals interfere in energy production and how that can start this domino effect on the body leading to major health issues. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about a method of action for these, these heavy metals and mitochondria and get into that a little bit later. But I wanted to kind of ask you, lead into a more personal question after this question, but with women, you see this a lot. Is there a reason why women are more fatigued than men? And I know for me being a male, it takes a lot for us to go to the doctor because yeah. I know something has to really be falling off or not really working before, you know, a man is going to go to the doctor. But for women, you see this fatigue thing a lot and you see 
thyroid issues a lot as well. Why is that? Well, men, simply because they have more testosterone, that's a, a big driving force in um, you know men's physiology. It just makes them more aggressive. It just makes them it's more. They have more get up and go kind of energy for that reason. It's testosterone is driving that. And so obviously men have more testosterone, but for women, you know, they're much more complicated hormonally and it's much easier for our hormonal system to break down because we are more complex hormonally. And there's a lot of xenoestrogens in our environment, like plastics and ingredients and personal care products and, and just uh, food additives and, and pesticides and things of that nature. Perfumes that we're putting on our body, they're estrogenic, they mimic estrogens in our body and they disrupt our hormonal function. And then you mentioned the thyroid. Thyroid has a lot of different things working against it. Our thyroid sets our metabolism, which will drive uh, you know, our energy level if we have energy levels or not. It can drive mood. You know, People can become depressed if they have low thyroid function and gain weight if they have low thyroid function. They can have brain fog as a result. So mercury is the number one metal toxicity and mercury deposits in the thyroid and that can, if you have an allergy to mercury, you can develop Hashimoto's where your immune system will attack the sure. mercury in your thyroid or the mercury will interfere in the hormones of the thyroid. So it'll prevent production of thyroid hormones and prevent production uh, or a conversion of the inactive form of thyroid hormone to the active form. So it, it interferes in a number of ways in thyroid function. And the chlorine and fluoride that's in our water, it's a water additive that we're showering in, that interferes in thyroid function. So that's just a, one of the reasons why women can have more issues and maybe more fatigue and hormonal issues than men. Yeah, you guys are a lot more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> we yes. are. Yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't think a lot of men understand that fact. In your book, you mentioned that you had a late pregnancy. Yes. And I wanted to shed, get you to shed some light on that for those women out there who are having late pregnancies. Should they just say once they have this child and they're tired that, oh, that's just contributed to my late pregnancy? Or is that a sign that, hey, I need to start doing some detox and this, this heavy metal thing is real? Yeah, it's a tough one because it took me a minute to kind of figure out that, okay, two years after I've had a baby, this is not mommy brain anymore. And and I and you also, uh, many women understand that having a baby is a very complex hormonal event. And it's a uh, typical that your hormones and your thyroid are kind of thrown out of whack after you have a baby and that women can, their metabolism slow down after they have a baby. So I was just kind of chalking everything up to that, up to this, you know, hormonal, you know, cataclysm that happened post-pregnancy. But after a while, I just thought that there's just something wrong. Like I knew intuitively that something wasn't right in my body and I, I didn't stop until I figured out what exactly the problem was and I got relief. So I just kept digging and digging and digging for answers and I still dig today for answers. I'm always kind of looking for answers and because, you know, even, even if you detox, you can still have, even if you detox metals, you can still have different health issues that come up. Like for me, I was doing really well with my health and then I moved to central Los Angeles and then I was just bombarded with EMF. And it took me a few months to figure that out. And then I was living in a moldy house. It took me a minute to figure that out, why that was causing me, me fatigue. And then I had, I had breast implants and then I decided to have those removed. And I felt a lot better after I did that. And so there are just, I, you know, there's different things that can hit us. Even when you kind of resolve one health issue, different things can happen in your life, different stressors or infections or death of a loved one that can really throw you for a loop and cause a, a whole host of other issues. I'm going to ask you something that's really personal. And you mentioned in the book as well that your marriage failed. And from mm -hmm. a male perspective, I think a lot of times when women are having these fatigue aches, issues, the male ego wants to say, my wife or my girlfriend doesn't want to engage physically with me, have sex with mm. me physically. Was this a factor in your marriage 
And how did you how did you deal with that? Obviously, you're not married anymore. But yeah. was it was it a factor in your marriage? You know, that specific is, issue was not a factor in my marriage. Um, it was just for, for other reasons. We just weren't getting along. Um, but that is a huge issue in a lot of marriages because there's a lot of expectations, I think, placed on women. What they need to, they want to work, they have the children, they have to cook and clean and do all this stuff. And then they're too tired to have sex when they come home. Not to mention that most people's libidos are shot because of toxins in their environment because the the perfumes are spraying on their body the the creams and lotions and soaps and shampoos they're using have estrogenic chemicals in them the food they're eating that's not organic has pesticides in them not to mention metals they get in the air food and water can act on our hormones and disrupt them as well so there's a lot of people today including men that have low libidos and don't uh, don't have a desire to engage with their partner they may love of them, but may not have a desire to engage with their partner because they simply don't have a drive. They don't have a sex drive. And it's a huge, huge problem. I just did a Facebook Live with Dr. Lindsay Berkson, who wrote a book called Sexy Brain, who's one of the foremost experts on hormones and how metals and chemicals impact and destroy our hormones and libido. About, I'm going to say four or five years ago, and you have me scared of LA right now because I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be out there in like two weeks, so I'm scared. Well, it's everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> but about, I said five years ago, I was watching a channel that said Fit TV, and I almost fell out of my chair because I remember them talking about detox, and they said, well, you really don't need to do anything extra to detox your body because your liver handles that. Why do we need to do extra <laughs> stuff if our liver is supposed to be the detoxification center in our body. Yeah, so that, there's a lot of people, I do get a lot of comments like that on my various, you know, social media channels and website and whatnot. Nothing can be further from the truth. And I think it's just almost like an ignorant statement for people to say, oh, you don't need to detox or liver detoxes for you. Well, if that was true, then the thousands of people I have tested wouldn't have any metals in them because they'd be detoxing all of them, right? But the the reality is, that our livers have a very big job and we have 80 to 100,000 chemicals in our environment. We have dozens of metals that have been drudged up from industry to give us all of our modern conveniences, all these metals and our computers and desks and all the things. Those metals came from somewhere and they've been drudged up. You look at the horizon, there's smog, there's car exhaust. Our livers are having to handle all this stuff and break it down. And they also have to deal with our terrible diets. You know, when you eat bad fats, when you eat sugar and, and refined grains, your liver has to process that and throw in that uh, along with that genetic issues where people have genetic issues with methylation issues, with breaking down toxins. Our livers are so overloaded and so overburdened. Our systems are backing up and our bodies are having to deposit toxins in our bones and in our fat. When your liver is not able to break something down, those toxins then deposit in, in your fat. And a lot of people who have trouble losing weight, it's because your body has to hold on to fat to have a place to store all of these toxic chemicals and metals when they run out of room in your tissues and your bones. And so I talk a lot about the liver and the truth about liver, liver cleanses and different supplements you can take and protocols you can do to facilitate liver function because I think a lot of people's livers are damaged from medications. You know, for every man, woman, and child in the U.S., we take 13 medications a year. That's what's prescribed. And a lot of these medications, including antibiotics, damage the liver, not to mention smoking and opiates and, and other types of drugs that people do impair liver function. So for someone to say, oh, the liver detoxes you, yeah, it does, but it's not doing a good enough job. And that's why toxins are building up in our system and why we need to take supplements and do protocols that facilitate liver function. Yeah, you're absolutely correct on that. That was one thing I learned in pharma is that pills go down a certain pathway. So your liver is trying to do all all of that in conjunction with whatever's whatever else it has to do. When I think about the liver, I think about the joker that's on the card deck and juggling all those little balls because mm -hmm. it's trying to do so many uh, different things. But getting into just a method of action for, for metals, and I know in several 
of the instances in your book you were talking about how the metals act upon the mitochondria and I know and I always really thank my science teacher from elementary school about mitochondria and middle school I know that mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell and most of these metals are working on the powerhouses of the cell which is the mitochondria we have a big issue in this country now where autoimmunity is exploding is this a catalyst for some of the autoimmune diseases that we're seeing? Yeah, so uh, autoimmune diseases and immune system malfunction um, are can definitely be attributed to toxic metals. But I, I know for any autoimmune disease, you have to first have leaky gut. You typically will not get an autoimmune diagnosis unless you have leaky gut because once you have leaky gut, your immune system goes into overdrive and having to deal with all the substances that are leaking into the bloodstream. And uh, we know toxic metals like nickel, if you have an allergy to nickel, your body can then develop an autoimmune disease. Uh, there's other metals like mercury that induce uh, Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroiditis. And uh, there's other other metals that can induce autoimmune disease, but for sure, toxicity plays a big role in the impairment of the immune immune system functioning. It interferes with microphages, the neutrophils, different components of the immune system, natural t killer T cells. Different metals will inhibit their function. They don't. They don't seek, you know, the the diseases. They don't seek that like, the viruses and bacteria to destroy. If you look at live blood cell analysis, you'll see they're real, they can be really, really sluggish in the presence of metals. But they're just not functioning how they're supposed to. And then uh, my friend Dr. Tom O'Brien produced a, a docu series called Betrayal uh, that uh, he talked about specifically how different metals impair your immune system function and then cause your immune system to attack your own body's tissues, which is, you know, the foundation and the, the, you know, what autoimmune disease is. And so for sure, toxins play a huge role in developing autoimmune diseases and detoxing metals and chemicals play a huge role in reversing those diagnoses. When I think about detox, the only thing that comes to my mind is green smoothies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and for for the majority of people out there they are on that mindset of hey i'm just going to do a couple of green smoothies over a four or five week period is anyone safe from these heavy metals if we've been living in this country for any amount of time and have encountered what we have encountered from our environment are we safe and to take that even further one thing that I really think about is kids and the stuff that they are having to take in in this world now, all the different chemicals and everything that's going on in the environment. Can you speak on that a little bit? Yes. So unfortunately, no one is immune. I mean, everyone is exposed to toxins, including children, in the air, food, and water, and supplements even that we're taking. And it's it's just a factor of modern life. And I don't think this is really a big surprise perhaps to anybody listening. I mean, you can look at the air and uh, especially in Los Angeles, um, you can see there's a, a brown layer of air and there, all the cars are emitting uh, smog and car exhaust that smells terrible. And, you know, I think perfume is like secondhand smoke. People walk by you and I kind of almost choke, you know, there, and there's so many toxic chemicals people are using in their home as cleaners. And, you know, for me, I just want to bring a lot of awareness about a lot of the different sources of toxicity that people are exposed to. But no one is immune. You know, we all have these metals and chemicals in our body. The World Health Organization said that we, on average, have 700 chemicals in our body. And I know statistically, just from testing thousands of people, that everyone has some level of mercury, everyone has aluminum, um, everyone has uh, some level of cadmium. People typically will have arsenic and nickel as well. Just uh, very toxic today. But it's that sounds really depressing, but there's a, lot, <laughs> there's a lot of things that you can do. That's what I talk right. about on my website on MyersDetox.com that there's so many things that you can do that are not terribly expensive, but it's just something that you need to add to your health regimen, just like eating healthy or exercising or going to bed at a reasonable time. It's just something that you need to be thinking about and adding some sort of detoxification strategy to your health regimen. You mentioned aluminum as one of the heavy metals, and I know 
that they've done research and they said that aluminum has been found in the brain of Alzheimer's patients. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you're having what we call an influx of Alzheimer's or an, an epidemic of Alzheimer's in our older population. I live here in South Florida, so <laughs> it's like the, the, uh, elderly population is around all the time but is this a factor in what we're seeing now just like autoimmunity is this a factor of the because we're not detoxing the aluminum that we've been exposed to that the offshoot of that is alzheimer's yes uh alzheimer's and other forms of dementia are definitely caused in part by the the high levels of aluminum in our environment they're also caused by iron Iron toxicity is a big factor in dementia. Mercury is a factor in dementia as well. But it's also our diets. It's a, it's a high sugar, you know, bad oil, bad fat in our diet that then displays like these partially hydrogenated oils in processed foods and in fried foods and in fast foods. They displace the omega-3 fats in our cells and in our brains. And they're almost like these plasticizers or plastics that harden our cell membranes and then just cause all kinds of different problems in the brain and our fat and our, our cell membranes. It's a multifactorial issue, but uh, aluminum, iron, and mercury are definitely big causative factors. The mercury and aluminum deposit in our nervous system and our central nervous system and in our brain and start causing all kinds of different problems that lead to uh, brain fog and then eventually dementia. I want to get into just talking about aluminum and how we actually get those things because no one is walking around chomping on aluminum foil or anything like that. Yes. But I'll get to that later. But I wanted to ask you this question. Your father suffered from chronic fatigue, then he developed cancer. Mm -hmm. Do some people have a genetic propensity to carry these he heavy metals longer than others before we see the effects of them? Yes. Yeah. And some people are just born, you know, with methylation issues. They're born with a genetic issue of various types that prevent effective detoxification of metals and chemicals. So it can be in the form of a, a sulfur issue where they just don't, they don't process sulfur very well. So they might eat garlic or onions or broccoli or cauliflower and just feel really sick afterwards. Those people have sulfur metabolism issues and you need sulfur to detox uh, metals and chemicals. So that can interfere in that process. And there's different types of other genetic issues that prevent detox. And typically the sicker somebody is, we know that the, uh, the more genetic issues they may have in regards to detox and they just harbor a lot more metals and chemicals than the next person. Are, how do we get these heavy metals? Because like I said, no one is walking around chomping on aluminum foil or aluminum things that are out in our environment. So how do these things, how do we get this mercury? How do we get this aluminum? How do we get this thallium? Yes, well, I have an article on my website called uh, Toxic Metals Sources or the Sources and Symptoms Guide to, of Toxic Metals. And you can just type in toxic metals or heavy metals on my website on myersdetox.com and find it. And um, it in my research, um, when I come upon something new I haven't read before, I will add this new source of aluminum or mercury to this this working document. And I mean, it's it, these things are everywhere. I mean, in our shower water in Southern California, we have uranium. I tested my water. I have uranium and antimony. Um, arsenic is a very common uh, uh, water contaminant. Um, we get cadmium and lead and mercury in supplements. We get, um, uh, you know, these uh, heavy metals are in green greens powders, uh, products that you're taking to get healthy. Organic foods can be fertilized with fertilizers that have cadmium in them. Organic means chemical free. It does not mean heavy metal free. These uh, old pesticides that we used to use that are not used in the U.S. but are still used in other countries, a product shipped into the U.S. and sold. Um, the pesticides can have toxic metals in them like lead and arsenic and fluoride, a toxic chem uh, you know, chemical put into the pesticides that's then in the soil 
and it gets into the food. So there, there are just so many different ways that these metals and chemicals will get into our body and then impact our metabolism and, and hormones and brain function, mood and energy. You said in the book, the more metals you have, the more they inhibit you to detox. So really those green smoothies and all that other stuff that we're doing probably isn't going to be a good thing until we get more of these heavy metals out of our out of us is that a true statement yeah absolutely you know you can do everything right for your health and this was me and this was a lot of clients coming to me i mean my clients typically they are i mean i'm just amazed they're eating unbelievable diets flawless diets they're taking expensive supplements they're doing all this stuff and they're just not getting anywhere and they still don't feel well and going to the doctor. They just can't figure out what is going on. And so I, I'm just kind of amazed at the client population, that, that the level that they're at. And the detoxification is just that last thing they really haven't explored or haven't thought about in their health journey. And it's absolutely true. You know, you can, like myself, I was eating the best diet and taking the best supplements and eating the highest quality food. It was all organic. It was all freshly prepared. And I was I was exercising. I was doing everything right. I was drinking, you know, eight glasses of water a day, and just doing everything. And I just, I wasn't feeling good. And I think that's where a lot of people find themselves and are very, very frustrated thinking like, what on earth do I need to do to feel good already? And, um, you know, a lot of people will turn to caffeine or stimulants or be addicted to sugar or carbs because it gives them like a little energy boost or mood boost. People are addicted to opiates and, and stimulants and, you know, you know uh, legal and illegal drugs for this reason. They're just trying to do something to give them energy or help them to feel better and they don't understand what is driving that, driving those compulsions and, and driving, you know, why they're not feeling well. And it, it's, it's really amazing what happens when you begin on a detox journey, how much better you feel. Um, but it doesn't happen overnight, though. You know, uh, when people start a detox program, they typically don't start feeling good right away. <laughs> you know, it yeah, takes... <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was really going to ask you that because I know that for us, we live in a society where, hey, it's got to be instant. It's got to be quick. But your book made me understand that it may take a while. For you, I think you said it took you like one or two years or so mm -hmm. and you're still – you're still on this journey. So talk a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, when you start on a detoxification program, why are you doing that? A lot of times people do something like that and go to the expense and the trouble because they want to feel better. And so when they don't feel better right away, when they start a program like, oh, you're, you're making me feel worse or I don't feel anything. And the reality with detoxification is Metals are stored in your tissues, you know, they're stored in your fat and your bones. Your body has sequestered those away so they don't interfere in your body's metabolism and function. And there's a, a purpose for that. And so when you start taking uh, minerals or supplements or binders that absorb metals and chemicals, or you take mobilizers or chelators, which are products or supplements, natural and synthetic, that then, you know, coax these metals and chemicals out of your tissues and they start floating around in your bloodstream, they start causing reactions and symptoms, usually the very symptoms that you're trying to get rid of. So a lot of times people will complain that they feel worse and they want to quit and you've, you've made me feel worse. But I try, I try to be as transparent and, and open as possible with people that, you know, you're, it's not always going to be, uh, you're not always just going to automatically start feeling great when you're detoxing. It's more like a roller coaster ride. You'll have periods where you're detoxing and then periods where you feel really good or you get a burst of energy and then you'll, you'll have another slump or you won't feel good or you'll be moody or you'll have a headache or something of that nature. You can feel nauseated, things like that. Um, but uh, there's lots of things you can do to mitigate or reduce detox symptoms like drinking more water, doing coffee enemas, uh, taking more binders. Binders will absorb all these metals and chemicals running around your bloodstream that you've released. So the, the reality is you know, you are going to have to deal with some uncomfortable symptoms when you detox, but as long as you take binders and, you know, I have an article on my website called, you know, how to deal with uh, healing reactions or detox symptoms has a lot of tips about supplements you can take or things you can do to reduce detox symptoms. You know, you can really make the detox process a lot more comfortable and palatable. 
and you should still be able to function and work and, you know, live your life while you're detoxing. Um, but it, uh, the reality is, you know, you will have some uncomfortable symptoms from time to time. Is there a special diet that you need to be on? Do you need to take meat out of your diet when you're doing these heavy metals? Do you go to more of a vegan diet? What type of diet should you do when you are starting this type of detox? There's a lot of myths out there with the, the ideal diet for detoxification. And I will tell you, it is the ideal diet is not a vegan or a vegetarian diet for detoxification. And I was vegetarian and vegan for a couple of years. I was vegetarian for 18 months and vegan for six months. I got very, very sick on that diet. So I've done a lot of research on both sides of the coin with vegetarianism and uh, for the paleo diet or uh, eating uh, uh, animal protein based diet. And what I found in my research is that you're, you need sulfur containing amino acids only found in meat to detox. And so I, I think a lot of vegetarians and vegans will run into trouble because they're not getting taurine and other sulfur containing amino acids. They're not getting zinc in their diets um, that their body needs to detox and push out metals. So while you don't need a ton of meat and animal protein, you do need a little bit. You need the sulfur that, that's found in, in meat to adequately detox. Does that mean that you can't be healthy as a vegetarian? No. I know a lot of people that are very healthy vegetarians. I know a couple people that are healthy vegans. I don't advocate the vegan diet in any way, shape, or form. I think it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to get your nutritional needs met with that diet. But some people genetically can uh, are much more in a better position to tolerate the nutritional deficiencies found in a vegan diet, but some people do just fine. I think it's a, if you're looking at a bell curve, it's a very few uh, percentage of the population. I think the majority of people do need to eat animal protein to be healthy, but you don't need that much. You just need maybe about 15% of your diet to be animal protein. Um, but I think that for the majority of people, eating a little bit of animal protein daily is the ideal way to facilitate detox. Yeah, a lot of meat gets a bad rap. I always tell people I'm a yeah. meat. I'm, 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 I'm a vegan. I like meat. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I am a vegan too. But you know what? There's there's a big spectrum of meat. You know, the factory farm meat bad, yes. charred black to a crisp bad fried bad you know if you eat you know the grass-fed organic meat that's like lightly cooked uh not cooked to death you know that's the ideal kind of, of meat you, you can't throw the baby out with the bath water you have to look at those distinctions within the animal uh, protein um it's not just it's not an all or nothing thing that's it's ridiculous yeah i quit eating beef about up until about maybe four or five years ago when I first had a, my first grass-fed burger. And I remember walking into the health store and the gentleman had a restaurant. He's like, hey, you want to try this grass-fed burger? I'm like, no. I said, every time I eat beef, I have a stomach issue. And he's like, no, you won't have a stomach issue on it. And I tried it mm -hmm. and I was sold on grass-fed beef. But before, yes. then, before then, I would always eat a burger because when I was in college, that was the thing. I played on the basketball team and we would always grab our burger and get on the bus to go for a game or whatever. And I would have horrendous stomach issues from those mm -hmm. burgers. But when I started doing grass fed, I was, I was sold. I won't ever eat a factory farm burger again. Yeah. And you, people don't realize they're eating these hamburgers thinking that they're, they're meat. A lot of times like at Subway, the chicken, that's not chicken. That's half soy filler, half chicken. And if you have a soy sensitivity, which a lot of people do, um, you know, and, and some of the, the chickens and the, the, the beef, the animal, the cows are eating uh, GMO soy, GMO corn because it's cheap feed. Those proteins get into that meat. And if you're sensitive to corn or soy or you're just your body doesn't like GMO type proteins, you're going to have a reaction to that where meat might be okay the, those proteins uh, that are unnatural in that meat are not, and you know, your body has a problem with those. Yeah, I think when you get in tune with your body, you know, like when you when I eat something that doesn't agree with me, like I had to stop eating French fries because when I eat French fries, I just get starches slow me down. And I know that yeah. about my body. When I eat a lot of starch, it just slows me down. So I stay away from them. I want to talk more specifically about some of the metals because I know you mentioned a few in here and there were some things and I like to keep people informed. I don't try to make decisions for people, but I think a lot of us are just not 
informed. We don't know what we're eating. We don't know what's in the stuff that we are eating. Yeah. In in your book, it talks about thallium, and it also talks about arsenic. And I remember a couple of years ago reading an article about chicken, and arsenic was actually in chicken, and a lot of people eat chicken. We were just talking about that with Subway. But talk about that and what it does, because arsenic is one of those things, and most people are out here it's the beginning of the year. We're trying to lose weight. We want to shed those unwanted pounds and they don't realize that they may be working against themselves when they are eating chicken that contains arsenic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, and eggs too. You know, if you're eating uh -huh. conventional eggs, even if they, and uh, you know, marketers are very smart. They put labels on eggs and on chickens that may make you think, Ooh, it's healthy. Like, so they, if you see cage free, that doesn't mean nothing. That doesn't mean anything. Stay away. You know, you have to be eating eggs that are organic and ideally pasture raised. So, but eggs can be pasture raised, but not organic. So you kind of have to be very careful when it comes to eggs and chickens and, and make those distinctions. So the ideal is pastured, pasture raised or grass fed and organic. And, and if they're not, um, uh, pasture raised or organic, they're going to be uh, fed a, a feed, chicken feed, that contains arsenic. And this is a practice around the world, not just the U.S., because arsenic makes the chickens grow 50% faster, and chicken farmers are paid by the weight of their chickens. And, you know, they're going to feed feed it whatever, or in, in the antibiotics, the antibiotic is in the feed. The antibiotic is actually what contains the arsenic. So they're going to feed the chickens um, the, the substance so they get the most money for for their um, for their lot, for their the things that they're growing. And so it's unfortunate, but you need to be aware of that because arsenic, if you have arsenic toxicity like I did, it prevents the detoxification of mercury. So you can be very mercury toxic, but arsenic will will poison the enzymes that detox mercury. Um, arsenic will also poison enzymes that transport fat out of your fat cells. So you can have a hard time losing weight if you have arsenic toxicity as well. And so uh, here I was thinking that for years, uh, decades, that El Pollo Loco was really healthy, that I was eating, hey, it's chicken and, and rice and beans. It's healthy, right? So I was eating that chicken and I became very, very arsenic toxic as a result. And I'm still detoxing that arsenic to this day. I have not had El Pollo Loco or conventional chicken for, for years, for probably 10 years at least. And I'm, I'm still dealing with the arsenic that I accumulated over my lifetime of eating that food. I can imagine because I haven't been in McDonald's or Burger King in about the same time that you have not been in Pollo Yoko. But I know I have some maybe have some after stuff in me that I probably need to detox from that. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And everyone's been there. Well, but we were all eating Pop Tarts and, you know, the, you know, cereals, Lucky Charms and all that kind of stuff uh, growing up. So I think everyone's in the same boat there. Let's talk a little bit about thallium because that was something I wasn't aware of. I think I was aware of. This is about everything in the book but thallium, and I found it very intriguing that it, it seems to me like most of these heavy metals are just jumping off, jumping off points for other things. Like you said, uh, thallium lowers the serotonin, and when you have your serotonin lowered, that's, just this, that's the, happy, the happy drug for us. And when thallium is placed in, or we, we take in thallium, rather, is that... A catalyst for depression because again like I said before early in the interview we have these epidemics and we have a depression epidemic when everybody is depressed have you seen this working with with clients who have depression and then they have high levels of thallium yeah I honestly haven't made any kind of correlations like that uh -huh. um, I do have lots of clients that generally when they start uh, a mitochondria detox when they start taking the biosil and pectosil C and other supplements that I recommend for them and they begin detoxing thallium, they do start feeling better. They start having more energy. They start sleeping better. Um, I, they do report they start feeling better mentally, um, but I haven't made any like direct correlation 
um, to uh, alleviation of depression and detoxification of thallium. Um, but I know with working with thousands of clients that, you know, if, if people do it, they actually do my program, the Myers Detox Protocol, and they stick to their detox. You know, they don't quit after six months because they get bored or, or frustrated or whatever. Um, if they stick to it, those clients are handsomely rewarded with, uh, you know, the benefits of detox and get these metals out of their body. Getting into, I wanted to ask you this question because it just came to mind when I was in your book and you mentioned that iodine is one of those things that help with arsenic. Are we able to take enough iodine in to detox arsenic or do we have to do something specific to target the arsenic? Yes. Yeah, so um, iodine is really good for detoxing fluoride and chlorine and mercury and lead and um, and other halogens. Um, but in like bromine, bromine is found in like Subway sandwiches and, and jacuzzis and, and it's a dose softener. Um, so uh, those things interfere in thyroid function and iodine is great at detoxing those substances. But for arsenic, one of the best things to detox arsenic is biocell. And this is marketed as a hair, skin, and nail product. And a lot of women are taking it, not realizing that they're they're detoxing with it. Um, but it's it's great at mobilizing arsenic and thallium and aluminum and and other types of metals and, and this family of metals that it gets. And uh, when you're taking that that mobilizer that's getting metals out of your tissues, you also want to take a binder. You always want to take a binder doing any type of detox, whether you're juice fasting or whether you're doing an infrared sauna or whatever you're trying to do, you have to take a binder. And I love Pectisol C. It's a modified citrus pectin. I love charcoal. Uh, clays are great like betonite or French grain clay, apple pectins. There's lots of different types of binders out there. Uh, Chris Shade of Quicksilver Scientific has some great binder products. Um, but that's a must if you're doing any type of detox. Yeah, I was going to ask you what those substances were to kind of get the heavy metals out. But what do you use? What do you, you mentioned a bunch of them, but what are your favorites? Because people are going to want to know that. What are your favorites? Yeah, you know what? A great starting point, and I take these every single day, it's a, it's a supplement I call a mitochondria detox. It's a supplement kit you can get in my store. It's store.myersdetox.com. And it's the simplest thing you can do to start a really effective detox program and it's just the two supplements biosil and pectisol c and the biosil uh, you take about five to ten drops of that per day and um, you want to take it in a little bit of orange juice or lemon or lime juice or even apple cider vinegar it helps it to absorb better and to work much more much better be more effective at detox and then um, about an hour later or at some point during the day, you want to take the Pectisol C and you take about five grams of that or you can do 10 grams or even 15 grams if you're you know, really not feeling so hot one day. It's really effective at absorbing metals and chemicals that might be causing symptoms for you. Um, so that you start with about five grams, see how you do and that you want to take a little bit of warm liquid like tea or warm water or coffee will work also. And you just, you know, uh, dissolve a little bit of that, of that in there, drink it down, and you want to take that about an hour away from food or supplements or medications because it's a binder. We don't want it absorbing those things or the nutrients in food. So you just want to take it away from the food supplements or medication. Yeah. I have two more questions for you, and I'm going to let you go. I know your time is valuable. Is it safe to say that the more heavy metals we have, the longer it's going to take us to detox those, or is it the other way around? Yeah, so it just depends on the person. Some people have a better ability to detox than others. So yes, if you have more metals, it can take longer. But if you're young and healthy, you'll detox a lot faster. Like children detox really, really fast and quickly because they're, they have really healthy metabolisms that uh, but if you're older, your metabolism is typically slower and it's a much longer process. It can be five to 10 years if you're like in your 70s because you're just things are just slowed down. I mean, if you've got multiple health issues, typically it's going to take longer as well. So it just depends on the person. And the last question is regarding 
the hair tissue mineral analysis. I've heard so many different things about it. If there's someone out there who wants to do this, what should they be looking for? Because it seems like some, some people say it works, some people say it doesn't work. But when you're wanting to work with somebody in case they don't work with you, what should they be looking for in this, this analysis? Yes, well, there's a lot of misconceptions about hair mineral analysis. Uh, the fact of the matter is that people have to know how to read a hair mineral analysis. And it's not what meets the eye. It's not even close. And it's, uh, it's not an easy thing to learn how to read. So a lot of practitioners or medical doctors out of ignorance that don't know how to read a hair test dismiss it as something that doesn't work. And another fact is that many times when people do an initial test of any type, a metals test of any type, the first test won't show much coming out. And that's because their body's not detoxing or they're too tired to detox. Once you start giving a client supplements and minerals, chelators, binders that are coaxing these metals out of storage sites, you see much higher levels of metals on subsequent tests. Um, so uh, there's lots of uh, effective ways to uh, you know, test for heavy metals. So there's hair mineral analysis, there's urine tests, and there's stool tests. There's also blood tests, but the blood tests you get at your doctors, don't even bother. It's a complete waste of time and money. We typically do not see metals in the blood unless you've had an acute exposure because the body has to sequester those toxins away in tissues so it doesn't harm the body and the organs and the brain. So you're not going to see stuff in blood tests. There's a specific type of blood test by Dr. Chris Shade that I do recommend. It just, uh, it's a different way of looking at metals and measuring them in the blood. That one's okay. You're not going to get that at your doctor. But the other ways of measuring metals, hair, urine, and stool, they measure different components so some metals come out in the hair, some come out in the urine, some come out in the stool. So you're, you're looking at tests that measure different things. So it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges. And so that's why I like to do all three types of tests to get the whole gamut so I can see, uh, get the best picture of someone's body burden of toxins. So there's no one perfect test out there, but I like to start with a hair mineral analysis because every Everyone can do it. It's non-invasive. Um, it's it's one of those things. It's it's inexpensive to do, and it gives me a, a lot of information above and beyond just what metals that you have. We can infer uh, different types of metals that you have based on your mineral levels. Um, so it's quite complex. It's something I've been studying for quite some time, for almost seven years now, and it's definitely not what meets the eye. Not everybody can do a urine test. If you're very very ill, you're not going to be able to do a urine metal test. Um, if you have a sulfur sensitivity, you can't do a urine metals test. Everyone can do a hair mineral analysis, which is why I start there, do an evaluation, and I'll determine if they can do further metals tests from there. Yeah, your book seems like everyone needs to do this test, and I'm going to be looking into it myself. You also have a summit that's going on, I understand. Can you talk a little bit about the summit and what you're doing and also uh, give us your website again. I know you mentioned it several times, but there will be someone out there who didn't hear it. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Well, um, my website is MyersDetox.com, and I um, I have a heavy metal summit coming up called the heavymetalsummit.com. And on that summit, I was very honored to co-host the summit with Dr. Dietrich Klinghart and Dr. Christine Schaffner. Um, who, they run a clinic together in Seattle, Washington. And Dr. Dietrich Klinghart is a world-renowned physician that uh, specializes in detoxification. He's an expert in it. And we've interviewed 40 experts, including Dr. Joe Mercola, of Mercola.com and Dr. Chris Shea, Dr. Ben Lynch, um, all these amazing experts in metal toxicity and the latest protocols, uh, the, the best detox agents and supplements out there. And really cool, we have one day of how to detox using bioenergetic medicine. Um, really, really interesting uh, topic. So anyone who wants to do a deep dive into how to detox your body. This event is online. It's totally free. It starts January 27th, uh, January 29th, sorry, and goes to February 5th, and it's totally free during that week. So I, anyone that wants to learn, just join us at theheavymetalsummit.com.
All right, cool. And Wendy's book is Limitless Energy. If you want to know more about heavy metals, I suggest you pick it up. I think I know a lot, but I learn so much more by reading her book. Wendy Myers, thank you so much for being on Perfectly Healthy and Tone Radio. Thank you so much for having me. Ooh, somebody, can anybody find me somebody to love? Alexa, play hits from Queen. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Point out the colors of you, I see them too, and boy, I like them, I like them, I like them. We're way too fly to partake in them. We vibing, we vibing. Alexa, play Ariana Grande. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. 